Good morning, and welcome to Practical Christian Lessons. I'm Joshua Pearsall, and we're going to be talking about Wisdom of Sirach 26 today. I said it yesterday, and I'll probably say it again for the rest of the videos this week. Um, we had a big announcement video about a huge resource we finished <laughs> um, on learning, defending, and living the faith. So go check out that playlist. Go check out the intro video. It came out last Tuesday. Let me get an actual date for you all. That would be 4.30. I don't know why I had to open up my calendar. Today is Tuesday for me. So, like, I couldn't just look at the date on the calendar. I'm just a big dumb sometimes. Wisdom is Hero, 26. Happy is the husband of a good wife. The number of his days will be doubled. A courageous wife makes her husband glad, and his years will be full of peace. A good wife is a good portion, and she will be given in the portion of those who fear the Lord. The good heart of a rich or a poor man is a cheerful face at all times. My heart fears because of three things, and I pray to God concerning a fourth, the slander of a city, the gathering of a mob, and a false accusation. All these are worse than death. There is also pain of heart and sorrow when a wife is jealous over another woman, and a tongue lashing makes it known to all. An evil wife is like an ox yoke that shakes to and fro. And to take hold of her is like grabbing a scorpion. A drunken wife is very wrathful, and she will not conceal her shame. The fornication of a wife will be known by her haughty eye looks and her eyelids. Keep strong watch over a headstrong daughter, lest she find some liberty and make the most of it. Be on guard against her shameless eye, and do not be amazed if she trespasses against you. Her mouth will open like a thirsty traveler's, and drink from any water nearby. She will sit down before every tent peg and open her quiver to any arrow. A wife's grace will delight her husband, and her skill will put fat on his bones. A silent wife is a gift from the Lord, and there is nothing worth as much as a disciplined soul. A modest wife is blessing upon blessing, and there is no scale adequate to weigh a self-controlled soul. Like the sun rising in the Lord's heaven is the beauty of a good wife and the ordering of her house. Like a lamp shining on the holy lampstand is the beauty of a countenance in the prime of life. Beautiful feet with a steady heart are like golden pillars on a silver base. My heart is grieved by two things, and because of a third, anger arises within me. A man of war in want because of poverty, a man of intelligence, men of intelligence who suffer contempt, and a man, man who turns back from righteousness to sin. The Lord will prepare this one for the sword. With difficulty, a merchant will dis deliver himself from wrongdoing, and a peddler will not be acquitted from sin. This is one of those times where I'm just like, why did you put the chapter break down here instead of up like three verses? But that's him. Um, if you didn't see yesterday's, he also ended talking about wives. Um, this one started on a good wife. Yesterday's ended on an evil wife. But here, of course, he goes through some of the sins. And if you haven't gone through previous chapters, he does address men's sins as well, and he will in future chapters. Um, this chapter, he seems to just be specifically devoting to the wife. And, of course, not going to defend any views I disagree with him on. But he's absolutely coming from a very different cultural context here uh, than us in our modern times. So before anyone gets super upset with the, the author here, not that he's going to care. He's been dead a while. Um, please understand he is coming from a very different cultural time. It's okay. Um, and watch our video yesterday to see on a big point I disagreed with him on about Eve specifically. Um, but at least in this one, he is going through specific sins, um, right? And, I mean, it's like going through some of the commandments. Uh, jealousy, right? Envy, um, <laughs> you know, adultery. Um, and to take hold of her is like grabbing a scorpion, wives and husbands or anyone who's gonna get married use that line on your spouse sometime be like you're like a talking to you right now would be like trying to grab a scorpion and just see what happens um i feel like that would just cause confusion and pause the conversation for a second i don't know but i think that's just entertaining um but i think that is something really important to think on like ignore the the singling out of wives here um but to reflect on specific sins and then the way it makes you act with others. Sin is something that's super serious. And I think the modern church, myself included at times, um, I am flippant about sin sometimes, and I really shouldn't be. But the church as a whole, at least in America and more Western cultures, seems to take sin not quite jokingly, 
but there are certainly churches that take it at an almost shocking level. Some are great. Some take it super seriously. Um, Methodist churches historically have been like really great at it. The UMC situation right now clearly is a different um, situation, but other Methodist churches and hopefully the GMC are going to really buckle down on that and be a lot more serious because historically like Methodists were like in their founding, John Wesley and the others that were part of the Methodist movement before the Methodist denomination became a thing. It was just a movement within the Anglican church. Their whole focus was on holiness and pursuing holiness and fighting sin because they saw stuff like this, because they saw the way it changed people's lives for the worse. England at that time, and really a lot of Europe, was really, really bad. Um, antinomianism was rampant, which is basically you can live however you want if, you, if you're a Christian and it doesn't matter. Whereas John Wesley was like, no, this is this is a plague. We need to stamp out of the church. And unfortunately, it's still persistent today, not not as on a high scale. Um, right, right. We most of us would say if someone is only a cultural Christian, are they really Christian? Um, and that that's a big discussion and question to have. Uh, but there are certainly many cultural Christians who just aren't Christians. Um, <laughs> even Richard Dawkins just came out saying that he's a cultural Christian, or that he appreciates cultural Christianity. And that shows part of the problem with the church's handling of sin in the past years. Um, it's a super, super grievous thing, right? We go memorize and go through the Ten Commandments um, once a week or daily if possible. And like, look at the gravity that is placed on those sins. Look at how severe it is. Go read the warnings to Israel, right? If you do not follow my ways, read the multiple chapters of curses that will be upon them and right those who hate me those who sin against me i will curse to the third and fourth generation where he has mercy on those who are good to the thousandth generation um right that's you can take that however you want i'm not going to get a discussion on, on cursing there but like the effects of sin do go down to at least three or four generations right how many people in your own life and if you haven't experienced this then God bless, but many of us have seen the effects of one person's sin go down generations and affect children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Like, it's it's severe, and our sins can have so much bigger impacts than we ever imagined. It can go so much further than we ever thought they would. It can ruin families. It can, it can ruin cities, um, and we got to take it a lot more seriously in our modern time. And yes, you can have discussions on what sin is and repentance and all that but you do need to at first come to an understanding of how serious sin is and part of how you can do that is just reflect on yourself and look at when you sin how does it change you right i know when i sin especially when it's some of the more serious sins um and if i do it earlier in the day like i see it and can feel it affect me and change me and change the way i act at least for a short time if not the whole day um and that's something that is really important to keep in mind, is that sin is so much more than just an action. It goes to your soul, right? The, the, the wages of sin is death, and that includes spiritual death in our time and now. Um, yes, Christ has given us forgiveness and power and victory over sin, but when we do sin, it still impacts us. We still have to deal with the consequences of those sins at times, including that. And that's something that really, really, really I encourage everyone to focus on and think about. With that, you guys go and have a wonderful day. God bless.